Hello everyone, welcome once again to Arrow Discussions, I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Eric. And today Eric and I are going to talk about episode 16, Dead to Rights. Eric, first thoughts? Uh, well, I guess the first thoughts would be at the beginning, uh, where he bites the dude with the knives. Yeah? Um, who had a really weird name, and he had a shtick, so I immediately looked him up, and he is an actual DC character. Oh really? Who is it? I didn't look that one up. He, he is a character called, uh... I'm not sure if you, if you pronounce it brutal or brutal, um, but he's 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 a character named Brutal who is a small gargoyle who throws knives. Wow, that's that is an obscure place to go. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, I thought that was a cool fight. No, no, it was it was it was, it was a really cool fight. Um, I, I, I actually actually a great starting point would be the director. Um, because there's some like actual like shots in this in this like I think this is the best shot thing we've seen yet like we saw um, the one the, the 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 one with Diggle had like really good action but like there's some like actual like movie shots in here there is at least two shots of like down the hallway where it's kind of symbolic and it's really nicely shot and I was like wow that's a cool shot yeah this was absolutely the most artistic episode all the way around I think oh yeah. From a from a from the shooting to the to, to character stuff and oh god there's a lot of character stuff I gotta say that that my favorite thing about this one is how everybody has something to do and something really oh, interesting yeah. to do and it, it's it's a it's a show where it's it, it's a really pivotal episode because it's you're finding out about the big giant villain plot but at the same time you're finding out more and more about how everything in the in the big grand scheme is also really personal for almost everybody involved. Yeah. And I was very impressed with that. Yeah, no, I I, I, I thought the way that they used everything um, and just wove everything together, and they kind of had me guessing at a number of points on character Me too. Um, uh, not, uh, none of which the fact that we got a revelation that um, Tommy's dad is not the head of this. There is somebody who inspired him to do this. Yeah, and what Im what really impressed me about that, I guess we're jumping all over the place because now I have to go to the end, but what impressed me a lot about that was we find that out, and then it looks like maybe he's going to die, and then yeah. they don't kill him, but if, if he, you know... It, it, it's kind of neat because for a minute there, I thought, I, I was like, okay, he got, he got shot, he's not going to die, and then... They really kept you guessing back and forth on that. Oh, yeah. Well, well when they first went up there, I was like, Tommy's going to get shot. And I was like, no, he's going to get shot, and then that's why Tommy's going to be the Dark Archer. and Because he opened that door. Yeah, and they didn't go there. Find it. No, they didn't. They completely subverted my expectations. They subverted my expectations in every way, because that scene, I think, is all about this this big death scene. And, of course, they set up... <clears throat> excuse me. They set up Tommy and... and um, and uh, his dad, to where they're finally maybe going to reconcile, and I was like, oh, well, that's when you kill him off, you know. They're going to kind of reconcile a little bit. He's all he's all happy about his speech, where he's going to be humanitarian of the year, and then they kill him off, and they didn't go there. And so while I'm sitting there trying to figure out whether or not they're going to kill him, I'm not even sort of, in any sense of the word, considering maybe Oliver is going to reveal who, that he, who, he, who he really is to, to no, Tommy. That, and then they do that, that and really I funny. lost my mind. That was such a great scene. No, it's a, it, it's a fantastic scene. What I loved about it was that mm -hmm. Tommy doesn't understand all angles of the situation at all, and until he, until he got to talk to Ollie, he didn't tell anybody. He didn't, he didn't like, like his dad asked him, and then, you know, the cop asked him. He didn't tell anybody because he hadn't gotten to talk to Oliver about it yet. And I thought that was a really good character moment. Um, also, I loved his dad when he was... Uh, when he starts taking um, Tom, Tommy up the stairs, and he's taking people out, and, and like he's going to get the Dark Archer stuff, he has this like giddiness about him. Like, he, like uh, almost like this is, this is what he wants to share with his son. Like, all of this other stuff, it isn't it's almost like that's not really him like this is the stuff that is really him and he and he's excited that he gets to show his son this stuff um and it was just all in the performance i don't know if that's what we were intended to take from it but that's really the performance i was reading i really like that 
Yeah, and if that wasn't in the script and the actor came up with that, that's a great layered thing to do. What a good choice. And oh, yeah. I was in, and, and another great fake out is in that scene that you're talking about is the idea that we think, oh, he's going to reveal to his son that he's the Dark Archer. Yeah. And then it doesn't get there, and then it's Oliver who gets to reveal himself to Tommy. And, and uh, by the way, this is easily, and this probably goes without saying, this is easily Tommy's best episode. Oh, and yes. Not only is it his best episode, but I've never been 100% sure if I liked him or if I, I thought he was anything but kind of a generic character. He's had his moments here and there, but he's still the guy who's not totally fleshed out for me yet until this episode. And here, I find out why that is. They can't flesh him out yet. He hasn't had his big moment yet. Yep. He's got to become this 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 interesting, more layered kind of kind of character when he starts finding out the world that he lives in, because he's the only character so far that's not really mixed up in any of the violence of the city yet. He, he's you know his dad is the guy that's causing a lot of that, but he doesn't know that, and he's not involved with it. And um, anyway, I just I, I thought it was uh, I thought it was really great character stuff for him, and uh, and a, a really good performance from that guy. Oh yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> he he really uh, both both him and and his father really brought their A game to this. I think this is the best episode for both of them. And I just felt um, like there was a just 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 generally just vaguely there was this this energy in within everybody's performance. It was almost like they all realized this was going to be a really special episode. Oh yeah. Um. Okay, so so maybe going a little bit more uh, linearly going back um, since we jumped to the <laughs> Absolutely. end. Absolutely. Sure. Um, I do want to say I thought the island stuff this episode was, was mostly superfluous. Um, it, it got us that they can now listen to the other people's radio. But other than that, like I, I, it's weird because everything else in this episode felt so spot on. Their relationship in this episode felt like it regressed a little bit. Um, like, like it was kind I of so back... Too. It, it was it was kind of back to to Slade not trusting Ollie and Ollie not wanting to fight and kind of being, you know, uh, mousy. Yeah, and that felt out of character for where we'd gone with them. Yeah, I I totally agree with you. Um, I I I kept wondering how exactly that was supposed to interconnect with the rest of what was going on, just because it's a really tight script and, and I and, and, like and, and the not every episode has had that, but this one I kind of I kind of thought would, just given the fact that you have all of these little subplots that are all intricately tied together to the main story in the in the in the rest of the thing. I mean, I, I was kind of expecting the, there to be some reveal on the island where oh, this is why we're showing you this right now, and I don't think that ever really happened unless I'm I'm just not thinking about it right. And, and and there was this moment um, when um, it, 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 it it's it's right at the end of the of the flashbacks where I thought um, when he, he goes uh, are you coming and I thought that was gonna be the moment when he picked up the bow and he just picks up this like tiny knife <laughs> I was I was I was like okay Slade's got two like really big swords like do you really think that that knife is gonna help you? Yeah, that's a good point. Although I did like his line there. He 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 didn't say are 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 you coming? He said am I am I going alone? I, I kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, and 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 more references to the to the Odyssey. Um, I guess that. Thank God he's thing. an thank God he's an Odyssey expert because thank man, God he read it once in pal in 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 college and memorize the entire thing. And is an encyclopedia on it now. He's like, "Oh, yes, those are th th that that that's part of the four of the four books of this part." And I was just like, "Dude, come on, man. Like, it was, I it paid attention to a lot of time. things in college that I don't remember nearly that well." Like, look, I I I I I read um The Ultimates 2 probably once a year. And, and 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 if I've been trapped on an island for a while and somebody says something, my mind is not going to immediately go, oh yeah, that's, that's from Ultimates 2. Um, I just like, love like, how he starts, he's a little psychopedic, and I'm like, dude, I've read the Odyssey twice and I don't seem to remember what you read. I mean, I know, I know Sill and Charybdis, but when he's like... When, when when he when he when he mentions like an exact number of how many chapters there are of a certain point or something, I was just like, wow, really? All right. All right. That was going uh, a little too far, Jeff Johns. He's 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 got a phot photographic memory. It's a superpower. Um, <laughs> but uh... well, you know what? Maybe that is kind of the case, though, because I also wasn't real sure that I bought that he would be that good at uh, at uh, fixing a radio. Well, 
And I'm nitpicking now. I mean, that, they, that was all fine. But they, I just, they kind I, of I, I did covered their bases by it. saying that he'd been doing it for years, working with that guy, with his dad. Like, that that, that worked a little bit better for me because it sounded like it's something he kept doing, not like, oh, I read this book once. <laughs> he did it once. Oh, well, I took this class one time maybe on Maybe he remembers radios. that book because it's the only book he ever read. Like, maybe he has a lot more space in his head. <laughs> maybe so. Like, 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 maybe I'm doing this wrong with all these different books. Maybe I should just read one book and I'll remember it exactly. Um, <laughs> but, uh, when they had that boardroom scene, uh, this is going back from the island, when they had the boardroom scene with the mom and Tommy's dad and the guy from Dark Knight and then the, like, two or three <laughs> other people. Um, right. Did you expect that group to be bigger? I mean, we have a notebook full of people that are apparently connected to this organization and then, like, there's, like, four people in a room, and they're like, yes, we're going to remake the city. I'm like, I don't know, I was kind of okay with that. I mean, I, 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 it makes sense that there would only be a small select group at, on the on top. I, I, at the same time, yeah, I expected it to be bigger than four. Two of them really want to get out. I thought that was weird. Um, what do you mean? There's a, there's a point... Okay. She wants to get out. Tommy's dad knows this. No, he doesn't. Well, no, you're right. He kind of does. Because she, she... Yeah, she, she said that several episodes ago when they kidnapped Walter, where she's like, okay, th- this is it. I want to I want to, I want to get well, out. That's right. Well, well and, and not just that, but at least since they've started to do this character arc slash reversal with her, he keeps coming to her and be like, look, look, you, you can't back down from the plan. Like, you know, you're, you're, you're you know, stop, stop, you know... <laughs> You're oh, what's I I I don't remember what he says, but he says something like that where he's he's like he's like you know you you're 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 not strong enough anymore or something like that. Um, and all of a sudden he trusts her more than yeah, anybody. That was weird because of anybody. I, I mean I I guess I don't know his interactions with everybody else. Maybe everybody else in the organization is exactly like that. They're like I don't know if we should do this. That's that's a lot of people. Um, <laughs> that's but, where we draw the line. <laughs> But is there any way we could kill like five hundred? Like a thousand is a lot. Um, but uh, it, it, it seemed weird that he would trust her um, because she's been such a naysayer. Like if I was him, immediately she is the first one I suspect to put a hit on me. Oh, that's it. that's exactly right. Yeah, I mean, like I was kind of okay with it before that when he just doesn't know anything is going on because because fair enough. She and I guess we'll just keep calling him that the guy from Dark Knight, the um, uh, Mr. Lau. I keep waiting for him to get deported. Um, <laughs> that that uh, her, her her and that guy they they've done a pretty decent job of of doing all this behind his back without him knowing about it, and their plan is a decent one. Um, but when he finds out about it, and she's like, "There's and 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 he's like Moira, there's." There's a there's a mole in our organization. I'm like, well, she should be the first person you're thinking about. I agree with you. <laughs> um, and uh, all right, well, you know, it's got it's got its issues, but it's all yeah. I don't know. It's it's all it's all plot stuff like that. Um, yeah. I thought for uh, for, the, for the for the major characters that I'm really like like invested in, I thought everybody got a lot of great stuff to do. Oh oh, they 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 did. Um... Uh, going going to the villains a little bit because because Deadshot comes back this episode. Yeah, what'd um, you think of that? I I kind of nothing did like he didn't have anything that was distinctly Floyd Lawton, but he wasn't as like off character, especially as he was last time. Um, I don't, I know he's not showing up in like full blown costume, but they have this like pan up like look how awesome he looks. I'm like he's just kind of generic looking, and on top of that. Why is he wearing a body vest? He's on a building, like, like you know, half a mile away. Like, like he never gets shot at once. Nobody even knows he's really there. Um, it seemed weird that he, that he, he wore, like, a bulletproof vest. But um, th- th- there's two things with that. Uh, the first one is China White actually gets to talk in this. Um, yeah, and, and quite a bit. And her fight with Oliver is really cool. Except for the one line. Okay. No, I just mean Corey. It's Corey. No, 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 it is. It's a really good fight. Um, but there's there's one line where he says something. Uh, he, he goes, he goes, why are you trying to kill them? Or why are you trying to kill him? And she goes, I'll settle for you. I'm like, that's not the response to that. Uh, like, like if he'd <laughs> said, like, you're not killing him tonight, um, I'll settle for you is an appropriate response. But not, 
why are you trying to kill him? Um, I also don't I guess know I didn't pick up on there. that. That's a, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe it's like no, no, no. China, China, wait. Put on your listening ears. You, you pay, pay attention. <laughs> I to also what he love said, that, and that then that's respond. her natural hair color. Apparently. <laughs> wait, what do you mean? Because she took off the black haired wig, and it was just white hair underneath. Well, that doesn't mean it's her natural hair hair color. Maybe she colors it that, Eric. Oh, but 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 because it looks like a wig, I just kind of assumed it was a wig. But when she took oh, the I wig see. off off of top of it, I was like, oh. Um, I also find it really interesting that um, she always wears black, but when she switches her hair to black, she wears white. I don't know what that is, but that's kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah, um, well, you know, when you're when when you're an assassin for hire and you need to be really secretive, <laughs> it's always a good idea to stand out. <laughs> color, color code. Uh, is very important because because yeah, well, she's like a, a she's like an evil Power black. Ranger, Eric. She's, no just, she's got to wear a, the same color, but no like, but like, black haired assassin wearing white, it throws them all off. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really important that she's coordinated like that. It's as good as glasses. Um, but um, <laughs> it's as the, good as glasses. The 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 other the other big thing with. Uh, with bringing Deadshot in that I didn't even think of. Like, I was just like, all right, Deadshot's gone back. Hopefully he'll have a mustache this time. He didn't. Um, but the... I didn't even think of the ramifications of what it, of what that means for Diggle. Me too, and I'm really glad that they reminded us of that, because I forgot all about it. I was like, if, if I had been remembering that way back, I would have gone, oh, well, of course they're not going to just straight up kill him off, because that's going to be Diggle's arch nemesis. Yeah, I was. I was like, "That's great." I was like, "That's really he's the guy who killed his brother." Yeah. I didn't even think of that idea, but that's that's so great that they that they kind of set that up. Um, and there's a couple of mentions of like earlier episodes that uh, there's a when uh, Tommy and Oliver are talking, he says, "You killed those guys when we were kidnapped, didn't you?" And like, I had this moment where I'm like, "God, we're so far from that." Like, like I almost forgot that happened. Like, it's been so long since that first episode. Yeah, it's 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 so much better integrated than I ever would have expected back when we thought that this was kind of a little bit more of an episodic show. And I kind of wonder if some of these revelations are going to kind of elevate a few of those earlier episodes. Yeah, yeah, I'm 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 actually kind of interested to see when this comes out, like on DVD, to rewatch it and see if there's more layers to that early stuff. Me too, because it, it sure feels like it now, at least in retrospect. And even if it's not, it, it's nice that they've kind of fixed it. Yeah, yeah. Um, if that's not the case, but um, I, but I, I don't know. I, I I was just really excited all the way around on this one. I mean, you, you've got you've got really cool little stuff too for 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 characters that aren't even a major deal. This episode, like I like that Felicity is training at the beginning. Oh yeah, yeah. That I I I, I like that a lot. Oh, and we didn't even mention um. The whole thing with 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 Laurel and her mom. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I wasn't necessarily finished. There's a lot in this episode, but yeah. Um, so, so the very the very end, uh, we've got that giant reveal, and it plays like a couple of the other really huge huge reveals we've gotten right at the end of an episode. And, and I and I appreciate um, the work done there, but it kind of comes out of nowhere. Um, I like I I, 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 I kind of hope there's that. some reason. I'm sorry. What I was gonna say is I kind of hope there's some reason that her mom shows up right then and that it's related to the rest of this episode somehow. I I, I, I have two things with that. The first one is I I thought her mom was dead. I got the impression that she was dead. Did do they say leave? I don't remember. Honestly, there hasn't been enough talk about it that I'm just it's it's not in my in my mind. I don't remember. Uh, okay, I I I just assume she was dead. Um, but. Do you remember when Birds of Prey did this? Because that's all I was thinking when she showed up. I was like, oh, I remember when Birds of Prey did this. That's exactly what I was thinking, too. And I was like, oh, she doesn't look like that lady from Full House. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I I think it's interesting. I, th- I think, I, I'm glad that they're finally giving Laurel something else, plotline-wise. Um, than just kind of... Because cause I, I, I don't know how much further they can go with her dad. Like like after after what's what's happened in the past couple episodes, I'm not really sure how much further that storyline can go immediately. Um, so I I think it's nice that they're giving her something else to do. That's true because she's sort of avoiding him right now. Yeah. So. Um. Uh. He and, and you know he's really consistent and I I'm, I'm impressed that they're kind of having him do the same thing every episode, but it's not stale on me yet. If that makes any sense, I mean well, he, I, well, he's got to be consistent. He keeps getting put in the same 
pos- uh, situation. It's not like it's not even necessarily like things are repeating. It's just like Arrow calls him and says, "Hey, look, this is going down." And he's like, "Okay, we're gonna we're you know we're gonna take his advice, but we're also gonna try and stop him." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. I mean, I I really thought it was kind of cool that in like the exact in, in almost the same breath, it's like it's like okay, Green Arrow, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna work with you for for just a minute because I guess I need your help for this one thing. Call me back. And it's like hang up the phone. Let's go get him. I I, I just I I, re- I really like that. What do you think of Oliver's girlfriend hunting the hood? I feel like it hasn't played into the plot at all yet. I'm me, waiting yeah, for it. Me too. too. Um. Well, to be fair, though, it was just set up at the end of last episode. Yeah, yeah, and and and, and I like their nice little relationship. Um, you know, we, I think we, they've we got some chemistry together. together. I was worried about it last episode because remember we complained a little bit about yeah. the, uh, about how forced those dates were, and now I can kind of see them together. I sort of get that, um, and I like that Oliver's taking risks with things like that because I feel like that that's very much in his character progression for this season. I uh, love the line where, where where Diggle says it's not really it's not really that smart to to be dating the woman that that that's hunting down your alter ego. And he's like, well, vigilantes have, have slim pickings. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I like that too. That actually sold the idea for me because at first I was sort of like, uh, it seems like it seems like we're kind of forcing um, a little bit of drama with some of these things where we've got to make it like the most complicated thing possible. Would it really be that complicated? But I'm okay with it. Um, especially after that, because it's kind of fun. And again, they're integrating so many more of these plots together in the big overarching, you know, you know, giant bad guy plot uh, that that I, that I thought that it, it's cool that it's a big, it's a big giant corrupt city thing, and it's also, um, it's also a big, it's also a, a an intimate family affair. I, I simultaneously, it's, it's kind of Shakespearean. Um, yeah, <laughs> it, it is Shakespearean. That's a good point. Um, I'm I'm kind of curious to know if the 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 man on 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 the microphone is the guy that um, Tommy's dad met. I you know, maybe know he... that is why that was there. And you know what? Like we talked about elevation. Um, maybe maybe if if that is the case, we'll go back and look at this again and go, oh, that was interconnected. Okay. Based based on what they're doing. And based on how much they they pull from from the Nolan films, I'm calling it now. It's Vandal Savage. Okay. I'm 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 putting that on the board. I'm saying the mysterious man, not necessarily the one on the microphone. If they are in fact two different people, I'm 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 going to say that the person that Tommy's dad met is Vandal Savage. I'm, when I'm you say, when you say the man, because I I guess I don't know what you're talking about. When you say the man on the microphone, are you talking about on the island? The, the the boss that is off island that they that they alluded to last episode and or the, the in the in the Odyssey and then they hear okay a voice so the guy the fire movie. the guy fires is talking to yes okay I gotcha yeah you you know, you know um I think that's a good prediction uh, I'll yeah. meet you there I'm not gonna bet against you on that one I th- I think you're I think you're probably Vandal right. Savage is kind of the next best thing to 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 Ra's al Ghul. um although Tommy's dad may be Batman because he. His, his his wife died, and then he went to find himself, and he met a man that put him on a path to save his city. That's hilarious. He, he I do like that. that I do like that one of our big bad guys is humanitarian of the year. Uh, yes, that's that 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 that's great. I just love stuff like that, where I mean, like this guy really sincerely believes in what he's doing. He's not just a straight up you know, bad guy. And, and it's a little over the top. I mean, you know, humanitarian of the year, he's going to kill thousands of people. I'm, I, I really want to know what they're going to do. Well, we do, we do now know that it is a device. Um, because they say that they acquired that, that tech company. And now that, you know, they'll have what they need to. Great point. Thanks for mentioning that. I forgot about it. Um, so earthquake machine. Um, like, 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 like off the top of my head, I'm, I'm like, what kind of device He's going to kill thousands of people, but fix the city. It's a weird conundrum I'm going through in my head. I'm like, what could kill thousands of people, but fix the city? And unless it's killing like like all the like, I don't know, like homeless people and like layabouts. Like I I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I I don't. It's going to be interesting to see what what exactly all that means, and if they can impress us. You know what I mean? If they can come up with something really clever. That's what I'm um, worried and, about. And at what point do they call it the save the town and make it a better place machine? 
Because they need to, they need to call it that. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> Uh, is there any major thing that we haven't uh, really touched on? There's a lot in this one. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I keep feel, feeling like like we like like we miss it, like we're missing things. Uh, well, well, just just uh, to double back to the beginning, I I, I do want to say, um, I thought there's two shots that are like long shots that I've not seen this show do yet. The first one's when uh, Tommy shuts the door on his dad, and you, it's like it's not like a close up. It's like way back in the hallway, and you just see him standing there like alone. I really like that shot, and I thought the same kind of shot was used even better after Diggle finds out and he, like, walks off into the light. I thought that was a really cool shot, too. I didn't look up credits for this episode, so I don't know who the director is or if he's directed other episodes, but uh, I just, hopefully I just checked it. I don't think um, his name is Glenn Winter, and I, I, I don't think he directed any of the other ones. Let me just scroll through here real fast. Um... No, he has not directed any of the other, any other episodes. Well, hopefully he'll become a mainstay then. Yeah, yeah. Well, next next episode is is Guy B who did uh who did uh betrayal. So yeah, um, we're, we're definitely seeing directors come back. I, I I think last episode was a director that returned to. Um, and and then the episode after that is Nick Copas, who directed uh, the the Diggle episode with all the cool action. So he's coming back. But uh, I I think that this episode was a lot stronger than Jeff Johns' last episode. Glenn Winter uh, primarily has been a director of photography and did ninety two episodes of Smallville. Oh wow! This doesn't look like Smallville at all. Yeah, but he wasn't just like directing episodes. He was he was the director of photography. Which oh, is... oh, oh, he he was the DP. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So so he yeah, he he's not he's not regularly just a, a, a director. Um. So that maybe so that's kind of maybe this is his like you know big break type of thing. Oh, he's been he he's been DP on 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 some Arrow too. Oh, okay, cool. Anyway, I just thought I would mention that. I I, I looked him up because I was curious. Uh, the, the the only thing that I thought was interesting with uh, with this episode that we haven't touched on is that Thea isn't in, in it at all. Um, What's that again? The, I, I thought it was interesting that Thea wasn't in this at all. Oh, you're uh, right. She's not in this at all. I like and, the idea and that neither is neither is uh, uh, what's his face that was introduced last Roy. episode. Roy Harper. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, that's that's not a mistake then. I mean, they're they're like, or I'm not a mistake, but I mean, like that was intentional. Obviously, they're like, we've got a plot with those two, and we're gonna we're gonna save it because we've got too many characters this time. I like the idea that as they're building a cast, they're learning to pick and choose, and it, they're not doing the TV show thing of, well, you know, we have all these actors, we have to have everybody have a subplot, you know, for this episode if it's not tied into the main plot. Yeah. I like that. And. And I gotta say, this cast is way bigger than I expected it to be at the beginning. Yeah, no, it's I it's really uh, expanded exponentially. Expand exponentially. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really expanding. And I'm actually finding these people, uh, a, a lot of these people, interesting. And they're not like all carbon copies of each other. I'm I'm really starting to like uh, Tommy's dad. Uh, Tommy's really coming to his own. Uh, I still I still don't like his mom. I still don't like Ollie's mom. Uh, I still think they're. She says something where she's like, "I I never wanted this." I'm like, "Then why are you here?" Well, she had a. To be fair, I, I'm hoping we get a little bit more about the early days of this of of this group because keep in mind that again, both she and the the Lao guy, whatever his name is, um, like are are, are ready to be Lao. done with this. And you get yeah, they should have just called him the same character name too. That would have been great. <laughs> Um, it's like, and then, and then, and, and then at the, at the beginning of next season, he gets deported and, <laughs> they, <laughs> and, and they, um, he goes to China, they, Green Arrow follows him. Yeah. Green Arrow follows him to China and then like beats him with a cell phone and yeah, but, 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 but anyway, he hangs him, they, uh, he hangs him outside Detective Lance's, uh, office. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, he's like, I'm still good with calculations, <laughs> but, but any, but anyway, um, I was going to say, she has this line last episode where she's talking about how this was not what they thought they were getting into when they started and they, they got too deep and they couldn't get out. 
And so I wonder if she didn't even know that that when when she signed on with this thing that there was even anything illegal that was going to happen. I just don't think we have enough information. Yeah, yeah. You might and the right. thing, but the thing is, I'm willing at the moment to somewhat give give it the benefit of the doubt because so many things have played out now to a place where early on I was saying I don't have enough information, I don't know what to think of this, or or even I'll admit to several times going I don't like this, and then find out what's really going on and go okay that was that was fine, um, and they didn't and I don't feel like they've strung us along too far. I think it's just we're learning things as, as our as our characters are learning things, and that's how it should that's how it should happen. I don't feel like they're keeping things from us that we needed to know episodes and episodes ago. Yeah. They, they they seem to be doing a really good job of revealing things at the, at the, at the, at the point that we really should know them. And uh, the structure of storytelling right now is solid. I'm I'm impressed with it. I mean, this is the way episodic television should be done when I'm getting this episode. You, 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 you know, they, they mentioned the first episode. Do you remember when we, when we started reviewing this and we were like, I don't know if I really want to do this? Oh, it's, yeah. I, 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 I can tell you I wouldn't have made it past the first three or four episodes watching it every week if I wasn't doing this. I, I would have dropped off and waited for the DVD. Um, yeah, and I'm hoping that some more people will, will jump onto it um, after they hear, you know, you know, guys like us say, no, no, really, hang on to it. It, it gets good. I, 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 know, I know at least one person I talked to who listens to these says he's going he's gonna to pick it up when, um, when it comes out on DVD. But uh, I, I, it's, it's, it's a lot, lot better than I ever thought it was going to be. Um, especially coming on the heels of Smallville. Uh, it has really complex storytelling for this kind of show. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it's the it, it's the most cerebral it's you not know, television show I've ever seen. But um, man, it's it's but it's but I mean, you know, it's it's a it's a comic book property, and you wouldn't expect this kind of storytelling for that. Um, given the track God's record great. of live action superhero TV shows, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I. If, if if this stays at the quality it's been at since it returned from break, this is easily going to be the best live action superhero show we've got. I agree with you. Uh, outside of Batman uh, in the sixties, I uh, think that in the fall it's gonna it's gonna have a run for its money when Shield starts. But yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. And and if Amazon starts, because because I'm sure. Well, that's be I think Shield will give it a, mo- a run for its money. I, the verdict's still out on what will happen with Amazon. But yeah. Um, I yeah, like but, everything I'm hearing about Shield. Yeah, I know Shield. You're probably right. Oh, it it kind of it kind of it kind of sucks that they they really just got their their you know feet on the ground. And it's like, oh, Shield's coming. That's kind of well. Weird. I don't think that I don't think that Shield is going to hurt this show. If anything, I think that uh, you, you know you know it'll, it'll help create a subgenre that will kind of stick around on television for a while. I'm just saying that I think that it's. It's just for your your verdict of this might end up being the best superhero show we've ever had. I'm like, yeah. I don't know. Shield has a chance of beating it on that yeah. level, but I don't think it's I don't think it's going to hurt it in the ratings, especially well unless they put it up on the same time slot, which I don't think they would be stupid enough to do. But um, but like if it's in different time slots and and, and everything, um, I think a lot of people will watch them both just because they're both based on comic. Oh properties. yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it'll be it'll be great for that. And if Amazon starts, like I said, we'll have it. We'll suddenly have a subgenre. Yeah, and and they're still talking about doing that Hulk TV show with Guillermo del Toro, I believe. Right. And and pow- and Powers is supposed to happen. Uh, and 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 we're supposed to get that Cloak and Dagger TV show. Oh, I don't know if that really is that still is that still in the works. I don't know if that's still in the works. I remember them talking about that. Because I mean, Powers actually has a pilot. <laughs> uh, I think Powers is working actually on their second pilot. Um, because that's oh, how, that's right, that's, that's right. They, they, but, yeah, yeah, I think I think FX turned him down the first time. Yeah, um, it's it's definitely a lot. This this whole series has turned out to be much better than I thought it was. It's still not the series I necessarily wanted, but it's it's really good for what it is. Yeah, but I feel like you and I have both really grown into it. Oh, oh, abs- absolutely. I'm I'm liking it. I, I I'm honestly it, each week I am actually excited to see it now. Uh, whereas yeah. yeah. Except for it was those... a chore before. It was like, well, we got to do the show, so I better watch this. Yeah, except for those two episodes, and I guess even the uh, it, really early on, it was like four and five or five and six. Um, I, 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 I like, like I like the show, but I, I didn't need to see it every week. Uh, and with the exception of the one episode that ended with him being arrested, uh, yeah. But the last couple of episodes, probably since probably the Odyssey, like leading up to the Odyssey forward, I just I, I'm excited every week to watch the show and see what they're gonna do. Especially because we're getting so close to the end, it really feels like we're not getting throwaway episodes anymore. 
Um, no, it's just it's building. It's compounding. It's yeah. Great. So well, everybody, thanks a lot for listening. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you have more to no, say? No, no. I was, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was literally just about to wrap up. So. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, everybody, thanks a lot for listening to Air Discussions, and uh, I really hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again next week with another one. I'm Captain Logan, and I'm Eric. See you later.